In previous videos, I've explained what the idle test timeout error is and what it looks like when you have a legitimate need to wait longer than 90 seconds between commands. Since the vast majority of people who see this error do not have a legitimate reason for an additional wait, let's walk through exactly what we need to do to make sure we are properly ending our sessions. First, let's take a look at the command we expect to see at the end of the test. When we call quit on the driver instance, we expect to see a delete command get sent to the session ID of the test we're executing. When you're running locally, this closes your browser. When you're running on Sauce Labs, it lets us know that you're done with your test. We'll close out the session and let you run your next test right away. You'd be surprised, but there are people that just don't have a quick command in their test. Obviously, this will give us an error, so please make sure you have a quick command. Just having the quick command isn't enough, though. What happens if there is an exception when executing the test? The exception is going to exit you out of the test method, and none of the lines of code after it will get called. Your test will fail, and Sauce Labs won't see any additional commands, including the quit command, and the idle timeout error will be displayed. The solution is to use a test watcher or an afterhook or whatever your test runner provides to make sure the code is executed even when the test has an error. Even this is not enough. My guess is that most of our users have this line of code and have it put in an afterhook like they're supposed to. What they also do is add a bunch of other things to the afterhook, maybe creating a report or sending results to the API of some test tracking service or taking a screenshot or any other number of things. If a line of code in the afterhook fails though, it still exits out of that block and doesn't execute the remaining code. This is another instance in which Sauce Labs will never see the quit command and you'll get an idle test timeout error. Even more confusing is when you update the results to Sauce Labs before you have a problem in the afterhook, before the driver quit is called. In this case, you wouldn't actually see an error in your results on Sauce Labs. It's still going to show this is either passing or failing, but there's also going to be an error associated with it and your tests are going to have waited 90 seconds unnecessarily. It's fine to do things in the afterhook before calling quit on the driver, but it's important then to add a try catch, try accept, or begin rescue to make sure that the quit method gets called even if there's another error in the afterhook. We should be able to completely stamp out this dreaded error and free up resources for you to run more tests in less time.